Okay, I'm back. All right, now let's dive back into this, okay? We're gonna get right after it. So we're gonna do a couple warm ups, just like any other exercise, right? So we're gonna warm up the shoulders and the neck just a little bit. Why are we doing that? Because what do we do? We tighten up, right? So we talked about that last video. And if you didn't watch it, go back and watch it because that's your homework in order to do this one really well. I also gave you the, why am I doing this? This is not to flash my abs, I promise. This is so that you can see the distinction between this dark and this dark and what is really happening in here where my fingers are. So we're gonna take those fingers, splay them again, just like in the last video and for the reason I described, take a breath, expanded that but not raising here, exhale, blowing through a straw. You keep going. The reason to do that, blowing through a straw, is because it helps you force it out and your diaphragm gets involved a little bit sooner. Keep exhaling. Keep exhaling. Keep exhaling. Keep exhaling all the way out until you're empty and you feel almost like a coffee. Can't get it out. Good. Now, shake your shoulders out. Don't let go of this. Can you hold on to it? Right? So that was your homework, right? Did you do it? So what I want for you to happen is that you can identify those muscles without having to get empty. So the more often you do that several times throughout the day, and you don't have to do sets of three or four or 10, you just remember, I'm going to do a couple right now. I'm taking a break away from my my desk and I'm gonna push back or I'm in the kitchen. You could do this standing, but standing is probably harder when you're starting because you have to think about more limbs and, and balance. Even though you're positioned just feet wider than hip width apart or so, there's still a little bit more balance than when you're sitting in a chair and supported. So practice here, very easy. Maybe move it then to a standing position. Let's take another breath in. On the exhale, all the way out, but then I want you to hold on to this and then try to loosen the shoulders. Breathe out. Keep those shoulders relaxed. They're just butter. Shoulders are relaxed, the neck is easy. Keep exhaling all the way out. Breathe it out, 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 out. Keep going all the way out. Exhale, exhale. Are you feeling that? Now I want you to hold on to it. Hold on to it. Drop your shoulders, keep that easy, and connect. Now, let go of the core, let go of it. And remember this, remember it's hand up. If I'm pushing against that hand, now this entire arm is bracing. That's what we're wanting for your core. We're not wanting you to, oh, I'm gonna suck in. We're not doing that, it's just right here. So all you're doing is bracing. So if you were sitting here and I gave you 10 pounds to go like this, now your shoulders may not tolerate that, don't get distracted with that. If I gave you 10 pounds and said, I want you to hold this at arm's length with a slight bend in your elbow here so we're protecting you, that would be hard to hold it over here. It would be easier if it were close to your body, but when you go here, your core has to break, brace. Now, come back to me. So just with your arms. So keep your hands, nothing in them, okay? I want you to hold it right here, but if I have you move it so you have a longer lever, and imagine you have a 10 pound, eight pound medicine ball or a baby, right? You're holding it right here. You hold that, it's more weight, right? And you have to fight to be upright, not to melt into it, not to fall into it. That is great work. Relax your shoulders, right? And then put it down. Good, so simple, simple things. Now, I want you to hold on to that again, tighten it up, just tighten without again sucking in. So I want you to count with me while I do this because inevitably, if you're in a room with other people or you're in a room by yourself, you're probably not counting out loud unless I ask you to do it. So I want you to count 10, nine, and hold on to this the whole time. Keep your shoulders easy. Eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, and one, good. Now, can you feel it? I mean, you're still tight here, and yet it's hard not to tense up here for some of us. Now, you may be better at it than the rest of us. I can count myself in those that if I'm tight here, I'm really gotta think about relaxing 
and think about words like butter, marshmallow, pillow, relaxing, letting it go, on the beach, in the sunshine, at the swimming pool, swimming, actually in the bathtub. So all those things, whatever it is that will help you relax, waterfall, rushing down, falling over you, tense through the core, but nowhere else, right? So important in that kind of concentration and focus. You can also take now to exercise. So where's the best place to put it? Yoga. So I'm gonna stand with you and do a couple yoga poses. So don't get nervous, right? We're just gonna do a couple easy standing ones. And what I wanna show you is how we sometimes may be doing yoga, but not actually getting the full benefit of the stretch. So let's just put it into what, what we know as a warrior pose. So the back heel should be down, your hip presses forward. Don't get too wrapped up in this. And then as you're pushing that hip forward, this is another way that we engage that core. So you actually get some bracing by doing that because we're kind of asking you to push forward, kind of put that on lock so that your lower back is protected and you have that tension through the core. Good, now if we raise the arms up, want you to push the hip forward again. You can open up through the arms. Now, you're here. Think about what it would be like if you were in a yoga class and you're just here and you're releasing and dropping the shoulders down you may actually be more relaxed through the core. So what I want you to think about is, if I were bracing, what would that feel like? See if you can take a breath in and when you exhale, instead of just doing yogic breath, I want you to breathe through a straw. Exhale. See if you can fire deeply in the core, yeah? Okay. Next one, I'm gonna take you to a different one, not the same stretch on that other side, but I'm gonna have you take this to a triangle pose. So both legs straight here. I'm gonna have you shift, give me a little attitude in your hip, and then we're gonna take the arms out. And I want you to reach as if you're gonna stay here, but you're gonna reach and touch that wall out here in front of you. Reach, 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 reach. Nice. Now I'm gonna take the arm down. Now this one is not leaning on this leg. I'm just placing it here. And I'm reaching this arm up. I want you to imagine that you have a brick in your hand up here. You're reaching it up and as you push that brick up, you have to hold it up with a straight arm. Your core is just naturally going to have to work a little bit harder. So I want you to hold it. It's a brick and you're pushing and you're holding holding it here, lift it, lift it, lift it. Good, hold on, nice job. Now don't be distracted if you're feeling a good hamstring and inner thigh stretch, but I want you to lift, push, the brick is up here, right? And that will make you a little more strong. But here, I want you to take a deep breath in, blow out through the straw. Nice job and relax. Okay, so there you have it. All right, last couple of things I'm gonna ask you to do. So I'm sitting a little bit further away from you, right? So all I want you to do is inhale, exhale through the straw, just to give you that engagement again in a very strong way. And then I want you to hold that thought while you raise your knees up and down. Now for years I taught a morning, Monday, Wednesday, Friday class in a retirement community. And many of them were restricted to movement that had to be kind of in and around a chair. So that they always had one hand for support. We did a lot of exercise sitting in their chair, doing weights or bands too, but core exercise was a challenge. They weren't gonna get down to the floor or if I got them down, I wasn't gonna get them up. So that was a problem. So sitting in a chair like this, this is one way we did core. And I notice the temptation is to go here. If you're not, you're using your core. We don't wanna do a lot of these because hip flexors are already something tight, right? But you get the drift. Then I would have you lift your knee, strain the leg and maybe lower that down. Lift the leg, 
straighten that leg and lower it down. What happens when you have a longer lever? It's a little bit more work. And again, knee and extending, just that even makes you change what you're doing. Those little things, no matter where you are, and then I would make sure to get up, stretch that hip flexor back out. So push forward through your hip. You can reach up and extend that so it's front of your shoulder, front of your core, front of your hip, and you get that entire stretch back out. But those little things are the foundation for the strong core that you want, potentially the other results that you want. So if you're shooting for a weight loss, you're shooting for a smaller waistline, it is not from tons and tons of core exercise. It's from the littlest things that actually build way in deep. And it's not from sucking the belly button into the spine, it's from bracing those muscles while you can still talk and be doing a lot of other things. So I'd love to hear from you down below. Thanks for joining me, but let me know, was this supportive and helpful to you? And will you do it? Because I can give you all the tools, but if you won't do them, they don't help. <laughs> all right. Love to hear what else you need and we'll be here all the way through.